Uh, so good evening. Thank you for joining us on this Friday study circle. And here we reflect the words of various masters and mystics, and mainly we focus on the words of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. But we are welcome to bring any reading, anything that we could reflect on, connect with, or has questions on in this study circle. So uh, we usually will, uh, you know, start with uh, reflections from uh, Chitradi, and I'll request her if she is comfortable, she can start with whatever is it is that she wanted to share with us today. Thank you. Yeah, actually, today, you know, for me, it is a great thing. I don't know. Uh, it is a difficult thing also for me because to see the oneness everywhere. Actually feel the oneness and see the oneness. So I started reading Synthesis of Yoga only recently. Maybe all, all these sessions helped me actually to concentrate in some of the writings of Sri Aurobindo. Yeah, because Savitri used to read, but uh, Synthesis of Yoga I took actually. But randomly I'm reading and not going continuously. So I read about that oneness. So far I thought actually once your psychic or soul come out and rule your surface level, that feeling of oneness is automatic and easy for one oneself actually. So for I had I formed the idea like that. I know about the writings and thing, but especially as an answer to my question. When I read that chapter, that chapter is that realization of the cosmic self from synthesis of yoga. I read, no, it is a simultaneous process. Once you are, you find your soul at the same time, you feel the oneness also everywhere. You see the divine in every being. He clearly, Shirbindo clearly gave this. I will read those lines, not a full para because it is a bigger one. I will read some important lines. It is from realis the chapter is realization of cosmic self. From synthesis of yoga, yeah, I will read. For our real self is not the individual mental being that is only a figure, an appearance. Our real self is cosmic, infinite. It is one with all existence and the inhabitant of all existences. The self behind our mind, life and body is the same as the self behind the mind, life and body of all our fellow beings. And if we come to possess it, we shall naturally, when we turn to look out again upon them, tend to become one with them in the common basis of our consciousness. So then what he's telling, we must therefore, Sri telling, we must therefore accustom it by meditation and concentration to cease to think of things and beings as separately existent in themselves. This is the, you want the para number? I don't know. Realization of Cosmic Self, chapter 10. One, two, three. Or fourth para here, actually. I found that. Yeah. Karuj, yeah, it's in the middle, middle portion. We, yeah, must, uh, we must therefore accustom oh, yeah. Yeah. because and... I just left all those lines maybe it, it will take some time no so I left some of the lines and I'm going you know down the we must yeah. therefore accustom it by meditation and concentration to cease to think of things and beings as separately existent in themselves and rather to think always of the one everywhere and of all things as the one. Although we have spoken hitherto of the withdrawing motion of the jiva as the first necessity of knowledge, and as if it were to be pursued alone and by itself, yet in fact it is better for the sadhaka of the integral yoga to unite the two movements. But by one he will find the self within, by the other he will find that self in all. That seems to us at present to be outsiders. It is possible indeed to begin with the later movement 
to realize all things in this visible and sensible existence as God or Brahman or Virat Purusha and then to go beyond to all that is behind the Virat. But this has its inconvenience and it is better if that be found possible to combine the two moments. This is the thing really made me for, uh, for the past two days. I was with this only. <laughs> again and again I'm reading. At least by reading that, that I mean, as if I will get that feeling of oneness. Yeah. <laughs> Even in Savitri also he brought, then I saw in Savitri also the same lines when Savitri is uh, searching her soul, actually that time she received the voice. There also Sherbindo brought the same thing. In the enormous emptiness of the mind, thou shalt see the eternal's body in the world. Know him in every voice heard by thy soul. In the world's context, meet his single touch. This is 476 of Savitri. So, yeah, because uh, I was in the opinion once uh, <laughs> your uh, soul come out and rule the surface being, it will automatically happen, but this, not like that. It is a simultaneous moment. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah own words and uh, if you could also speak uh, two or three lines about the book synthesis of yoga for those of us who haven't read it yeah like, it okay great. synthesis of yoga is uh, by Sherbindo. actually that that is um, from 19 august 1914 to january 1921 up to january 1921 one these uh, synthesis of yoga first appeared serially in the monthly review Arya between August 1914 and January 1921. This is, uh, yeah, this is from mostly from Pondicherry only. Each installment was written immediately before its publication. The work was left incomplete when the Arya was discontinued. Sri Aurobindo never attempted to complete the synthesis. He did, however, Lightly revise the introduction, thoroughly revise all the part one, actually. So this uh, book, in a book format, it came out in 1948, actually. Yoga of Divine Works were published as a book by the uh, Sherbindo Library, Madras. No other part of the synthesis of yoga appeared in book form during Sherbindo's lifetime. Only in 1955 is the first edition, it seems, actually. And also you can see so much of difference. Initially, before the arrival of mother, he wrote in an elaborate way, actually. Very elaborate way, all the yoga and all. Then slowly he brought out that, uh, I mean, uh, supramental and also the divine shakti, everything. And also he revised with the psychic and soul. He has shared the revised the synthesis of yoga. It is very beautiful, actually. Of course, uh, Savitri contains everything in the poetic form, but maybe, one, I don't know, only here, yeah, Shirvindo's grace and mother's grace only made me to read uh, this of yoga also. Because it is in an elaborate way, sometimes the, this brain needed this elaborate way, no, actually. But everything is in Savitri, the essence, everything is in Savitri, yeah. But this is the thing I want to, I, I want some clarification. How to see oneness everywhere, actually. Yeah. I need clarification, really. <laughs> and what the passage that you just read, would you like to just share in your words what it meant to you? Yeah, this is what this question arises now, actually, because before that, as I shared, I thought it is all after the psychic come forward it is it is as if it is the psychic's duty to see the thing everywhere to see the oneness let us not bother about it at surface level i thought like that actually but uh, she'll be but i some small small articles i read in mother's writings also about uh, feeling the oneness but i didn't take it seriously 
now after reading this this question arises how to see the oneness everywhere actually and that is the question yeah no i meant you know the text that was shared because it was uh, i mean the reading was really fast right either we yeah. read one more if you are all right and yeah. the want to just tell us what that text meant to you can you see it yeah text means yeah the, this is the thing actually because he is say is uh, shirvindo is telling no first paragraph itself first uh, forever real self is not the individual mental being that is only a figure and appearance our real self is cosmic infinite it is one with all existence yeah we are reading and it is for me it is a theoretical one i couldn't i mean observe till today that oneness i couldn't feel that of course we uh, i mean it is very normal and natural with uh, all satsang groups and uh, i think the followers of the path i don't know about the other i mean with all human beings that is the question yeah <laughs> beautiful uh, question <laughs> yeah. anybody can clarify really <laughs> the amongst ashramites and uh, devotees of mother that synthesis of yoga and life divine both are the toughest mm -hmm. scripts of sri aurobindo yeah the toughest mm -hmm. and uh, generally we need help uh, to in analyzing them and that is why there are not many people who make an attempt to give us uh, 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 lectures or explanations on them because the way to interpret them um, is multifold okay whereas okay. savitri can be read alone read by oneself and read repeatedly with different um, uh, with with a different meaning a deeper meaning each time okay but with life divine uh, i mm. mean when i was reading it with uh, uh, an ashramite friend i i just told him that you know it is bumper it is it is, it is bumper and uh, he laughed because he said it is not bumper jyotsadi it is super bumper because it just there is a lot of intellectual intellect connected with very deeper meanings so uh, don't worry if you don't follow it fully yeah. because you are no, all no, no. Yeah, yeah but, but that i i just took that oneness only yeah, the, yeah. i mean one yeah thing i would like to reveal of myself very humbly mm. i have um experienced or other witnessed just one few seconds in my life about 6 or 7 years ago when i was in the kitchen and um i was um, i was listening to mother's music and cooking for the um, evening and in a, for a few seconds i felt everything come alive you know it was almost like everything around me spoke to you know take me no try me uh, uh, everything came alive and then i started i couldn't uh, figure it out so i started to shake my head and i said how can the toaster talk or how can an object tell you anything and i it, it took me maybe 4 5 seconds maybe a little more yeah and uh, it vanished now it is almost 6 years i yearn for that moment to come back again you know uh, that yeah. something mm. will get animated but it never returned but at that time my yearning for mother was very intense mm. i did not i forgot food everything and i realized in that that just a split second so i could understand what you were saying yeah correct in that in inanimate objects also uh, mm -hmm. you, you you can feel life 
similarly very often if you notice if you are sitting outside in silence uh, you can feel flowers talk to you yeah uh, you know take me or pick me or don't take me leave me here but uh, this was something that i uh, yeah. i can think for a fact that there yeah. is a possibility yeah possibility only through grace it is possible no and mother gives you one taste of it it's almost just like a lick and then then it's gone and then after that you're just wondering when will it come back so it it yeah. is a possibility okay thank you yeah. uh, anyone else would has any comment or thoughts on this so i think jitta ji for me i would say that you know this thing like you know how most of the mystics they have very clearly said that you know we all go like either we all go or none of us go right like we cannot achieve anything like the ultimate goal because of the oneness yeah. and somehow we you know especially in india you know we have kind of heard of you know personal mokshas that okay you do it you do it you know and say if you do it it becomes easier for everyone else right yeah correct correct yeah much that more is... easier to understand in corona times right that if there's even one person who is with the virus or disease then everybody else is again susceptible of full yeah. down so i think that yeah, yeah. correct yeah not, it was not possible to understand the concept of either all or none right so that was very really beautiful and it's it's i think it's more... yeah as yes uh, josna ji as she shared with the flowers and uh, material things yeah I, i feel it is all i mean at least we can we can do that but with people with all the surface level uh, i mean all the qualities yeah it people it is very difficult i feel so i you know so it's i think it it's difficult if i feel that i have to do it but yeah correct it will not be a doing it will be a happening mm, yes josna ji shared yeah. her incident and josna ji have heard this and i find it very beautiful they say that you know we are so used to things happening in one specific way that when we have such experiences like say especially maybe in say meditation we see a light or something like this the mind being so clever it wants a repetition of what it felt and it never gets repeated like yeah. every time there's something new but in my mind because i'm so smart you know i want i have a image of how enlightenment would, would be how you know oneness would be and this thing like they say it transcends all that right so again it's like you know trying to see something which the eyes cannot see like you know in savitri we were reading right beyond the eyes beyond the ears and stuff so i think that's it and i think two three months back i was just sitting and i was also wondering very strongly on this you know this oneness and stuff to and then i got a call from james saying that you know there's a workshop integrate yourself would you want to do the summary note for that so the timings of it i felt for like quite odd that i'm thinking about you know kind of oneness and he calls me for integration a workshop so again i don't know i think everything is taking us towards that but it's again you know undefinable and probably the one who says that i have had it wouldn't be able to kind of put it in words like i don't know but it's yeah you know, there's something that are best left to wonder because if i try to you know if we try to limit or define it yeah yeah it's very interesting you know, i almost took it i took it as a mental formation and i said no no i'm fabricating it you know my mind must be fabricating it but there was something so magical in the whole thing that shocked me you know i was shell shocked for so long i was just standing and staring and then after that there was no action but 
I realize that they, you know, like mother says, respect every object that you handle. And she has spoken about how we handle money, how we keep notes in our purse, every minute thing. She says, don't throw it, place it with respect. And um, I had read it many years ago and I never throw anything. So I realized that there must have been some motive by which she said it. And then I started searching. So somewhere I think, yeah. I guess yeah. then when, uh, when we, um, maybe as we get ready, we will see it in human beings too. Yeah, that is what I, yeah, but Shirbindo insisted upon that, no, that it is a simultaneous movement, finding your soul and, yeah. And you that have to rise it. above our little petty um, correct. Yeah, correct. mental formations which exist to probably reach them. Yeah. Captain is there. He can share his opinion, valuable thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> from the school days, we had been studying different stories and all this. Dr. Jeffrey said that we know I did in a particular life. So, uh, like, uh, not audible? It was like very, I think. Yes. There was a network issue. You want to start again? Okay, okay. Or, uh, <laughs> let me go to that other room. Okay. It was a bit jumbled. Uh, am I audible now? Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, from childhood in the school days, uh, so there are a lot of stories, uh, like in any language, linguistics. So, uh, we have not paid much attention, like stories only we have read and we have forgotten. Actually, there are such some central idea of this oneness was being injected into the system from the beginning, but we have not paid much attention. What has happened? Like uh, there was one selfish giant, uh, you know, in the class uh, English syllabus uh, in the class ten, we had selfish giant. The giant was uh, very selfish, and he did not allow the children to go inside the garden and all this. So they went off. Then the winter came suddenly, and uh, there were no birds chirping and all those uh, trees and all this. So uh, you know that uh, to stop that, he put a boundary and all this. That story was like that. And uh, uh, then uh, winter came and his life uh, became uh, miserable. Then uh, what has happened is that uh, the children, they were playing outside, outside the garden. So in that garden, uh, so uh, they, they made a hole. Some children, they made a hole and uh, they came inside. And then the, uh, the spring came back and uh, all the birds and all this sort of shaping and the leaves came on the trees and all this and all this. So uh, then... Uh, 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 this thing uh, that child says, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, that there was some wound in the child's uh, hand or somewhere. And uh, then that uh, giant giant came down from the first floor of that uh, apartment where he was staying in that adjacent to the garden. And he says that, uh, what, what is the mark? Uh, so he says, uh, these are the wounds of love. So this is actually that this is of Jesus Christ story actually. So they don't, once the child, children, they came and all the life came and that means we have to love everybody. And uh, this was one story which I read, the, this thing was Selfish Giant. I don't know who, who has written this, but it was very famous story, the Selfish Giant. So the, uh, the main important thing was that what, what are the wounds? He says, the child says, these are the wounds of love. These are the wounds of love. Because the Christ was uh, crucified, no? so that mark was there on the hand. So uh, the, this time he neglected them, uh, the children and all this, all this. they were, they, they were uh, creating noise and playing and this and that. He did not like initially, but he became a changed person after that. 
the nature has punished him. So this was one story which he read. And because when uh, you had been reading this, so, uh, all these stories are coming into the mind. Then another was that, uh, that there was one uh, church, from that church, that one priest was there. And from the remote villages and all, there was no churches. But say once in a year or uh, on, uh, twice in a year, that person used to go to the remote villages and all. And uh, then he used to teach them that how to do the prayer and all. So in that process, uh, so by the boat, uh, it has to go because all water, water and all this. So uh, that priest went there to the village. Then he, uh, along with the villagers, they assembled in the small place and they prayed for the, this thing. They made the prayer and uh, then they were coming back. So uh, after the, this thing, seeing off the villagers, they saw him off and again that waterway, he was coming back in a small boat. So now, uh, so it became dark in that uh, water and he, the, that uh, priest sees uh, that somebody is, uh, some light is coming on the water. And uh, then slowly they saw that uh, it was as if somebody is uh, with a lantern in hand, somebody is walking on the water and approaching, approaching their boat. So uh, then that person, he uh, went inside. So uh, he says, uh, priest, I have, uh, I was doing that prayer when you left that place and all, but I have forgotten one sentence. Uh, if you can repeat that. So I thought uh, you must be still on your way and also I thought I'll come and inquire that, means ask you. So uh, the priest says that I'll, I'll tell you what is to be done. But first you tell me, how did you, how did you came by walk on the water? He says, why? This is very simple. I love water and water loves me. And water allows me to walk over the water. So, so it is very simple actually. From the beginning, probably either we have not known or we have never been guided. And if we know that oneness, that oneness, there is only one Brahma. Say like Upanishad and all, everybody is telling, everywhere it is written. Now, to practice, it is difficult. What Sri Aravinda is telling here, that we have to do the meditation and concentration. So by meditation, when you come to know the who am I actually, once that is discovered, then it becomes easy actually for us to see God in everything, every creation. Everywhere, in the, uh, there is a matter, uh, means uh, atom, molecule, uh, there is a plant, tree, human being, uh, animals, everywhere, animal kingdom, plant kingdom, everywhere. Every creation, whether it is uh, uh, light material or otherwise, we can, uh, we have to practice. We have to, first of all, we must know who am I. So that uh, correct answer, if I get myself, when that realization comes, then probably it will become easier to see uh, that oneness. Even uh, Swami Vivekananda went to uh, US in 1893. Uh, he, the first uh, sentence when he was given the chance to speak, he came and addressed everybody, sisters and brothers of America. So uh, the entire world, he met them that we are the uh, children of one God. So that is oneness actually. It has got a lot of meaning, actually. There's a lot of interpretation and all. And they have never heard. They are the educated lot in the Western countries. They have never heard that everybody, in one word, the sisters, he met everybody. Everybody as the mother is one. So we, we call it Param, param, uh, param Brahma, Param Brahma, or uh, Supreme, or whatever name we give. Allah, Bhagavan, God. So that remains the same. And we are, we are actually nothing actually. This is, uh, they say that it's a mirage actually. Our existence is not there. So, and then, uh, because finally we have to uh, get merged with that oneness. That, that everybody, uh, like there is our prayer every time, whether we are doing meditation, or there are so many uh, kirtan, bhajan, or uh, you know the uh, religious life, spiritual life, or whatever we are working, our uh, destination is the same. We have to go and march in that light. So this much only. Thank you.
Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, that was really nice. Thank you, Captain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very simple way he explained, you know. It's very beautiful. Yeah. You know the fact that we can resonate with so much of what we all share also give us that glimpse that you know we are all kind of you know it's like the, the stories seem different and yet they are same you know the challenges look different and yet they are the same so that yeah that itself is the oneness <laughs> to feel that no yeah every time like mostly it's like you know somebody say something and you're like oh i have been there too yeah the voice issue is that come closer to the mic okay I think, yeah, so uh, Shweta, you would want to uh, say something on this? Yeah, yeah, what you were saying, uh, now, Taru, uh, that uh, we're different and yet same, so that reminded me that, uh, yes, also, I think a practical step to move towards oneness is, you know, honoring the differences and, you know, uh, encouraging linkages. So that is something uh, that, uh, you know, like I have uh, followed uh, through one uh, uh, author that I followed, uh, Dr. Dan Siegel. He is uh, a bestseller author. So uh, he uh, suggests this and there's like, like six, seven years that, you know, that is one brainstorm is one book that, you know, uh, I always go to because uh, it is about adolescent children. So like, you know, in that it's very beautifully said, you know, that uh, uh, always, even uh, if we have to go near too far, uh, it would be like, you know, with people around or even if we take our body for that matter, integration brings harmony. And I think harmony is the step to move forward to that oneness. So even if we take our body, even though each part is different, you know, uh, by itself, but as such, they function in integration. They are one. It's, it belongs to one body. So by itself, you know, like my hand has its function. We have to honor it, you know, it, uh, as a different thing. But, you know, also it is linked, linked to my body. And that's how it functions. So even like human to human with my, uh, you know, people I know. And, uh, you know, when I understand that, you know, they're different from me. And I honor that uh, difference. And yet I find something, you know, that is, uh, you know, uh, it links me. That is the heart, I think, you know, uh, where uh, we find linkages when, you know, we connect to them as a soul. So uh, that step really has helped me. Like, uh, you know, I always remember this part, like uh, always honor the differences and encourage the linkages. So that is what uh, it just came to me when you said we are different and yet same. So, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Very beautifully, you said, no, honor the differences and encourage, the... encourage yeah, okay. the linkages. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah Rabi ji, aap agar yaha hai, kuch aap bhi is pe bolna chahenge, ek, jase hum sab ek hai, ye jo oneness ki baat ho riya, is pe aapke kuch vichar. <coughs> ek second. आप मेरे से कह रही हैं ना हां जी मैं पहले भी कई बार कहा है वननेस पे तो जैसे कि ईशा वाशु उपनिषद में है वासुदेवम सर्वम मिदम सर्व खलविदम ब्रह्म तो एक्चुअली क्या दीदी वेरी ट्रू स्पीकिंग की मालूम हम सबको है और हम बातें बहुत अच्छी करते हैं मगर हम धरातल पे या ग्राउंड लेवल पे हम क्या कर रहे हैं दैट इज द मेन थिंग अभी वननेस पर बात हो रही है तो दो साल पहले ओरोविल से एक बुक प्रिंट हुई थी वो फोर लैंग्वेज में एक साथ थी मदर का सतप्रेम से कन्वर्सेशन हुआ है तो सतप्रेम जी मदर ने सतप्रेम से कहा कि ये बुक आप निकालिए और इसको कई लैंग्वेज में निकालिए और मदर ने कहा ये वंडरफुल आर्ट किल है वो बुक मेरे पास है तो एक तो वो चीज है और मेरी बहुत ही मुलायम शब्दों में रिक्वेस्ट है सबसे कि हम इसको जीवन में उतारे जो सबसे बड़ी चीज है वननेस की कहना बहुत बहुत आसान है वननेस के बारे में मगर इसको जीवन में उतारना जितना इतना कठिन है इतना कठिन है 
कि शायद मेरे ख्याल से कोई करोड़ों में एक आदमी इस वननेस को ट्रूली अपने लाइफ में अप्लाई करता होगा और इसका सबसे अच्छा प्लेटफॉर्म है कि हम अपने सर्वेंट्स के साथ अपने परिवार में और हमारे जो ऑफिस में लोग हैं उनके साथ हम किस तरह का व्यवहार करते हैं दैट इज द मेन थिंग थैंक यू थैंक यू रवि जी चित्रा जी डू यू अंडरस्टैंड अ बिट ऑफ हिंदी और नॉट एट ऑल आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड बिट बट आई विल बी हैप्पी इफ यू गिव अ जस्ट अगेन थैंक यू बट यू नो इट्स वेरी इजी फॉर अस टू से टॉक अबाउट वननेस but it's very 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 hard like one in a billion people would be actually practicing it and he said that mother had taken out a book in which there were some conversations with uh, sat prem ji and he has that book and probably talks about oneness as well so yeah but the question is how but again i personally feel it would not be a doing so if we can just you know see the differences like shweta was saying i don't know like yeah honoring is different but still you know sometimes you feel that how beautiful it would be to actually because you're always so fragmented to feel that one is it just feels like so much beauty that one wants to reflect on it and yet when it has to dawn it has to dawn yeah yeah ananas ji if you are, you want to share something on this topic before we move ahead we have all shared on oneness agar aap kuch bolna chahenge if you are here you would want to speak uh maybe he isn't here uh, so uh I think we can move on. So, uh, anybody else who has anything that they would want to share, please unmute and uh, yeah, Jyotna Ji, please. Thank you. I read on find your psychic being, and I read on sincerity. What would you like to hear? Uh, find your psychic being. I basically read. because i was finding i was searching how to find your psychic being with reference to last week's uh, conversations that we've had so i felt we should clarify and bring in some more clarity to our own selves as to where we are headed or where we should head so mother says on 7th april 1929 find your psychic being i will read the line and you will get it we are conscious of only an insignificant portion of our being what are these insignificant parts of our being the sadhak asks and mother replies almost all of them there are very few things which are not insignificant all your ordinary reactions ordinary thoughts sensations actions movements all this is very insignificant it is only at times when there is a flash of the higher consciousness through the psychic and opening into something else a contact with the psychic being which may just which may last for a second at that moment it is not insignificant otherwise the rest of the time actually what we lead are insignificant only otherwise all the rest is repeated in millions and millions of copies your way of seeing acting all your reactions thoughts feelings all that is ordinary and you believe you are extraordinary particularly when you are seized by extraordinary sensations and feelings those that you consider you consider extraordinary you believe you are lifted higher nearing something superhuman but you are quite mistaken it is nothing but an ordinary state deplorably ordinary you must enter deeper 
try to see within yourself if you want to find something which is not insignificant so she sort of makes a beginning uh, you know it hit me that most of the stuff we do is totally useless stuff that we do then the, she was told uh, she was asked by a person who visited pondicherry ashram that you have said that in a previous life we were together but if we had not done yoga couldn't we have met all the same i mean maybe we would have still met and she answered not necessarily i remember the circumstances in which i said that it was to a lady who had come here and asked me how it was that she had come here this is true in a general way when those bonds scattered all over the world at great distances from one another are driven by circumstances or by an impulsion to come and gather here it is almost because they have met in one life or another not all in the same life and because their psychic being has felt that they belong to the same family i'll only read a few lines which i underlined which had a connect there that is why even though they are born far from one another there is something which compels them to come together and it is the psychic being the psychic consciousness that is behind it this it is that is it is strong enough not to allow itself to be opposed by other outside forces and outside life movements that people can actually meet it is profoundly true in reality there are large families of beings who work for the same cause but it is something deep in the being something that is not at all on the surface otherwise even if people met they would not perhaps become aware of the bond i think this comes with that oneness also which we sense people meet and recognize each other only to the extent they become conscious of their psychic being they obey their psychic being are guided by it otherwise there is everything all that comes to oppose it all that veils all that stupefies all those obstacles to prevent you from finding yourself in your depths and being able to collaborate truly in the work so beautifully said you are tossed about by the forces of nature then she said there is only one solution to find your psychic being and once it is found to cling to it desperately to let it guide you step by step whatever be the obstacle that is the only solution so the lady again she put the question how did i happen to come here i told her that it was certainly not for reasons of the external consciousness and it was something in her inner being that had pushed her unfortunately the awakening was not strong enough to overcome all the the rest and she turned to ordinary life for very ordinary reasons of living that just broke my heart josna ji <laughs> why <laughs> no i mean yeah i think i think the sentence right i mean sometimes and this is what you go one goes through right i also i feel it so this thing like sometimes to overcome all the rest you do return to the ordinary life and for yeah very very ordinary reasons of living right so but she yeah, said so. external motives are simply pretexts excuse it used by the psychic to realize itself this is what she said and she then she said 
you know the same lady returned and um, she, her mother says the when the lady came back she says she was quite a wonderful person in the beginning she had taken an attitude of benevolence and goodwill towards everything and everybody even the worst scam she only saw the good side then as she stayed on her consciousness developed and after a time she began to see people as they were so one day she came and she told me mother says formerly when i was unconscious i thought that everybody was good but people seem to be so nice why did you make me conscious so mother answered her do not stop on the way go a little further so mother said she concludes with once one has begun yoga it is better to go to the end so nice it was to read very i i i really resonated with it you know this morning only uh, monica was sharing with me that you know in the integral course that she is taking the integral education there was this thing that she read that sri aurobindo had said that you know one is passive remembrance like memories and all that like you know it's just there we don't need to know i mean you know everything is being recorded but there are certain things in which we actively go and we try to look for what we are looking right like okay if we want a solution or if we want something but there he says that often we find something that we were not even looking and that diverts us from what we were looking you know and that is the problem like if we could keep our focus and not get diverted you know i think that's how basically maya acts right like if it doesn't want the progress it just keeps you occupied in the unnecessary so that was again so beautifully said in this and even the last time you know you remember we had read about self indulgent i think last to last time that how so much of us is about me 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 and that feels that you know i'm doing justice to myself and it's the most of the time like sometimes it's needed right like they say ego is the bar and ego is the helper so sometimes when you're not even standing it's needed for you to stand up for yourself and after that you need to drop it and i think Uh, sometimes uh, like once in upnishad session i had was attending something there was this phrase that you know if somebody stops you and you stop that means you never began you know kind of a thing that like in hindi it was like kisi ke rukne se agar aap ruk gaye because you know we have this thing that i was going to do so much but that person stopped me or that situation stopped me and as mother you know says it so beautifully most of the time that you are more than your circumstances to and but again you know when these things happen you don't know the why is or the how so not trying to bring arrogance into anything but you know she talks about sincerity and will and we see these right without these like she's saying to reaching to the end is not possible with you know okay you know with our half an hour of seeking and spirituality in a day it like every time 24/7 i think uh, last time we had discussed that as well that it has to be all the time and also mother is telling no go beyond that no that uh, that is the thing yeah this again corro corroborates with the oneness principle yeah that is what i'm thinking go beyond yeah. that because don't see your, i mean yeah you can see all the mistakes no, of but others but go beyond that yes yeah no, this is also very beautiful rather it feels miraculous that when a mind is kind of set on something like a new thought or a new thing like chitra ji is talking about everywhere we see somehow we get the hint of that right and then one wonders that was it always like this and then a new thought arises yeah. and then we see that how kind of you know the forces of i don't know whatever nature or anything they are also trying to guide you that see this is 
probably you know the thing even mother says that if you have a question just keep it you know in your mind just kind of keep the question and you will get the answer so that's also because nature has nature or the divine like whatever word we want to use it's just i also so yesterday night i was reading sunlit path and uh, i read something on similar lines from the like so i'll just read that it says give instead of taking if one were spread out in all things if all the vibrations which come and go expressed the need to merge into everything to widen oneself grow not by remaining within one's limit but coming out of them and finally to be identified with everything one would no longer have anything to lose for one would have everything only one doesn't know this and so one doesn't know one can't do it one tries to take accumulate 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 but that is impossible one can't accumulate one must identify oneself and then the little bit one gives one wants to get back one gives a good thought one expects some recognition one gives a little affection one expects it from others for one doesn't have the ability to become the good thought in everything one doesn't have the ability to be the affection the tender love in all things one feels just like that all cut up and limited and fears to lose everything fears to lose what one has because one would be impoverished on the other hand if one were able to identify oneself one would no longer need to pull the more one spreads out the more one has the more one gets identified the more one becomes and then instead of taking one gives and the more one gives the more one grows yeah shweta uh, beautiful timings of this yeah. <laughs> you want to just again summarize it like what stuck you with this that would also be very beautiful uh, no so it was again just a reiteration because uh, we all know about oneness you know we obviously we know that uh, after all we are all one and uh, you know like uh, what uh, troubles you about others exists in you that it's just that you don't know about it so uh, and i have no doubt about oneness definitely there is oneness and we just have and you know those glimpses how do you get like uh, for me uh, i feel that uh, when i'm really not able to judge anybody i i know that it come from that point you know like see mentally you are you know still uh, somewhere you know like it uh, triggers or something but uh, if you think soulfully yes do you really judge or you know like do you hold grudge nothing it doesn't happen so uh, those glimpses like you know it uh, it uh, also tells me that yes after all you know one oneness is what uh, you know uh, uh, this world is about and uh, when i read this yesterday night before sleeping like i was re- reading this section the ego and self giving everything was making sense and this stayed and today when like uh, jyotsna ji was reading it came to me suddenly ki are ye to kal raat ko hi padha tha so i thought i'll read it out <laughs> yeah thank you shweta and nandini uh, do you have anything to share with us today i haven't read anything uh, i mean in the past couple of days but yes i i i uh, resonate with the i mean we all resonate with the word oneness right even captain said that but my question is how do we practice it if we truly uh, because there are moments there are days or there are moments in your life that one does become conditional in some ways right i mean you don't want to or you don't because you're you're aspiring to you know get go beyond but there are some some moments where 
where you know it not about stopping yourself but uh, you're just not able to practice it so why do those blocks come and why do we you know not sometimes are not able to go beyond so that that's that's a question if someone has you know uh, if there's an answer to it like it would be i mean it would be nice to hear because yes truly speaking as someone said uh, that yes it's a word that you know it has suddenly sprung up right everywhere every i mean it has been there i'm sure from you know centuries old but i i think a symbol of oneness for me would be at this point mother teresa I mean somebody who you know went beyond and like how a uh, captain said when it truly reminded me when uh, when he said right uh, about uh, vivekananda saying you know brothers and sisters but that's it so that one person comes out in a sent like you know in a de- decade or something and brings this into your uh, consciousness so so that's where i said you know you find uh, i found that line quite tragic if i have to say right you we do return to the ordinary you know events of life to lead probably very ordinary you know um, uh, days uh, yet thinking that we are extraordinary in some way and uh, so so that question is for me also why is it that we don't we are not able to practice it right and how do we do it i mean how do we actually make that go beyond and what would you know bring us to that same path as uh, as as that one decade you know that person in that one decade who comes along yeah just give me some water yeah Yeah, Joshna ji, you have unmuted. Would you want to uh, reflect? No, okay. <laughs> I I was actually listening to you, and I would speak for myself. I think the ego and the desires come into mm. us, or it's always you know the ego. It's it's me, or um, I feel it this way, and and we create. a difference i always felt that somewhere the vital and the ego play a role and they they hold us in the wrong way i don't know uh, taru chitradi kadak bhai i don't know but there is something that uh, we we decide or we profess to want to do it so then, also my Uh, so is there a question is it is it because like you know sometimes you do you know your soul is also journeying right and is it because this lifetime to further progress to actually feeling that oneness i have to go through this particular journey right now today i understand it i can practice it maybe on a certain level but to go beyond do i have to you know is it possible in this lifetime is it you know because your lessons are so hard at this point so yes ego does come sometimes in between or even if you want to you know there is an ego because like like taru said sometimes you have to you know bring up yourself or stand up for yourself and ego will come at that point so how is that something that is a constant journeying and you know learning that in my next lifetime maybe uh, you know i will <laughs> so how how because if i have this one lifetime i don't know what is going to happen in the next but if you know if if you have to do it now how do we truly go beyond this that's uh, as you said yeah desires also i think i do uh, get but that question is so you know it's so strong sometimes it comes up because uh, i i do see, i mean we see it in our everyday lives right there are so many areas and uh, spaces that we do have this uh, the oneness is in one particular because like here you know i would find that oneness right 
because i know i can speak to you you would understand it this group would i'm in the safe space of speaking it but i know uh, if i had to say it in front of a certain number of people um, uh, the the judgment is automatic right you know oh ye to pata nahi philosophy mein chale gaye hain they are not you know do you, are you living in the real world does it really happen and at that moment you know that that moment because you know you are being judged how do i see that person in oneness and still send my love because it it you know it does poke you or hurt you so at that moment how do i do it i i mean i need you yes yeah. vita yeah yeah i mean i get that point because uh, yes so uh, you are taken as a philosopher and the real world you know like that you have to interact and transact with the day in day out uh, yeah you uh, do feel that you know uh, uh, you uh, kind of don't blend with that uh, world or you know uh, but uh, i i have not uh, uh, felt uh, Uh, or judged them i yes uh, for me oh. there is a need to be you know in my zone and my space but when i am with them uh, i just uh, you know like i i, I find uh, you know like uh, uh, there, there is a friend in everyone it's just that when it comes to uh, conversations and all yes those are the conversations that do not interest me much so i i try to be in my space but uh, when i am with them uh, the energy and the connection is you know very uh, like uh, i don't know like i enjoy uh, being there but uh, i would prefer yet to be in my zone you know because those conversations don't nourish me that huh. is what yeah so that is what even i go through but uh, i don't Uh, find any judgment i mean i i don't tend to judge them yeah that's yeah uh, yeah so you wouldn't judge them that's i mean not about you so that's what i think that split second so even the conversations that so do i would i practice at that point i mean you know if the conversation is not nourishing me i stay in my safe space do not judge and you know try to see i mean obviously you know send that uh, oneness uh so me being there yet is that also i mean is there a lesson to it or is there something to it hmm. if it's yeah. not nourishing me hmm. Hmm. why <laughs> am i in that space yeah yeah this, that like is, this is yeah. nourishing for me right i am here this is nourishing for me but there are and there are some some spaces that you just can't avoid it yes. doesn't nourish me but yet i am there so what would be the what would be my i mean okay a lesson or what would be the reason i you think are, it provides yeah. for my growth i mean ah, okay. i feel ah. yeah yeah i mean i i really feel that you know uh, those experiences just uh, help me and uh, 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 yeah yeah i okay, mean so okay. many situations right, right, right. everything just they are just providing for my growth, growth yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you you know actually yeah. you are here out of choice eh? because this nourishes you huh. but because we live in a society and we cannot choose our family there are certain things that we just have to live with mm. and when you live with them there is a kind of a tolerance and there is a certain zone where you don't enter mm. so you make that choice right you make the choice oh, you don't okay. enter the, you don't enter the zone it doesn't nourish you you are not there mm okay and you know you are not there there but right the you haven't chosen that company but that doesn't mean it is bad very right. often, as mother says and i think uh, yesterday or two days ago taru was mentioning 
that what we see in the person in front is a reflection of what exists within ourselves. Mm. You know, we don't like some, I don't like something in you. You're I right. think it's a profound thing for me that I have that defect. Yes, yes. Sorry, go on. And so it is. Right. Okay. No, dirty. Dirty, come here. Thank you. Tushna ji, just to, I mean, I have a lot to say and I think I had to leave at 8, we'll finish at 8.15 today. I'll just make it quick, whatever is coming to me. First of all, I feel we always do have a choice. Like something in me tells me that I don't, that I have to do this. But I have seen for myself personally that there's something that the person or that relationship or the society is giving me, which I want. Like I always have a selfish interest because I feel there's nothing I have to do that is without my choice or my permission. Like I think there's something in me which wants to feel a bit victimized or a bit sorry when I say that I can't choose my family or my, you know, whatever. But I have very deeply reflected on this and contemplated on this. There's always a choice. There's always a choice. And people have, I don't know, risen from ashes, you know, but we are scared that, okay, you know, I can't do this to him or I can't do this to me. And we say we don't have a choice, but that choice, you know, is always there. And I felt like when Nandini was sharing, they, all her answers were already in her question. You know, she said, it doesn't nourish me, but I, you know, but how much time does a Nandini, just using her name like this, spends in such circles and how much time does she spend in areas which doesn't nourish her, right? So that's the answer within her question. But then why don't you, right? Because we feel we are getting something there, which we are not getting here. We feel this is not really real. And that is real. So I better be there. Otherwise, people will call me names. Why do I care about who would call me what, right? Like once that thing sets in. And the doership question, the oneness, sorry, oneness question also, I felt her answer was within the question that, you know, as long as I'm a doer, a doer can't be one, right? And it's like, you know, we are such clever people that we want everything charted down for us, right? That, okay, what would be step A, step B, step C, step B? Okay, step D is that, then I know how to get it. But I don't think, you know, surrender, oneness, these are processes. We are so used to knowing everything and jotting them down that it's painful to see ourselves that in this also, we want everything very clear, right? Like it's a dawning, it's a happening that we were discussing, like we were discussing before. But as long as I feel that, you know, there's fragments within me right now, like, you know, she said that how most of the time she feels oneness, but at times she doesn't. But for me, I would say it's the opposite. Honestly, like I don't feel that oneness most of the times. I feel fragmented. I feel I have to do this, do that. So I think one thing, not pointing her or signal, you know, kind of trying to put this on her, but when I, you know, just about everybody, like I think first thing is to be honest, right? And in honesty, I can see where I am not one. Maybe I don't even know what oneness is, but I do know what division is, what fragmentation is, right? Like say somebody is judging me for that matter. I judge myself and I don't think twice about it, right? And I totally accept it. A thought comes and it passes. What in me catches this, that somebody else said something to me? So, you know, that fragment is what I can see. And if I see, I think it's somewhere there's a dissolution. When I keep seeing, keep seeing, keep seeing. So like, you, you know, they say that you can never know the truth. The truth is again, you cannot know it, but you can know the false. But I think in my cleverness to always want to know the truth, I refuse to see the fault because if I see the fault, I'll have to change. Then I can't say that, oh, no, no, you know, I just want the ultimate, you know, yesterday also, sorry, in the, on the Wednesday session, we were talking about steps, right? That how small, 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 small things make the big happening eventually. But I want the ultimate because I'm too smart, right? Like there's something in me which is so clever, 
which works against me that it doesn't let me take the small steps that i can so that one day you know a white light would come and i will just rise that white light will never come and so i think if we just see the faults if we just see my weaknesses if i just see my divisions right now that is my okat you know that is what i am capable of so but very sadly lot of times we don't do what we can because we want to do what seems bigger and that i feel is very sad and that i feel is a lot of times how kind of you know they say that that those hidden forces operate that pull you back to the lower conscious net that where are you going come come do you even understand and that is where you know faith comes that i will get it when there is time but at least let me clear the mess right next to me and forget about that purity and bliss because that's somewhere else i am here right now that's my truth so i think i would begin there and and that's it yeah so any last comments and then i had to be uh, like leave at 8:15 today so if we can i guess vigilance is the key it's beautiful taru really beautiful you pointed out that no the fragment is inside yes that is the thing yeah i cast the point now yes <laughs> thank you uske upar na ek plate so that wo chhitakta nahi so captain you have unmuted yeah, I, uh, no thank you uh, actually when you were talking so uh, some thoughts are coming to me uh, you know nowadays uh, there are a lot of videos come like uh, one from the iskon it must have been done so there there is uh, uh, somebody is knocking at the door so then when you open the door then you see the lord krishna has come so uh, he said who who are you he says i am lord krishna so he says why uh, why have you come is you had been you had been meditating on me you had been calling me you had been to meet me and now you are saying that why have i come is may i allow me to go inside or not he said yes 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 please come so then uh, he comes then he says that i am going to stay with you now i am not going anywhere else so then that uh, that person like we are clever now you had been talking about that we are so clever we don't want to change so now that krishna comes and stays with me so that is the end of it actually because now the two got merged together now because everything whatever you are doing uh, you wanted to do something you want to harm somebody now you cannot harm you wanted to call bad names to somebody you cannot because that krishna is with you now you wanted to become pure impure things you cannot do is it okay is sabji kharab ho gaya isko servant ko de do you cannot give because now the krishna is watching everything because krishna is already with you so it is very nicely done up the wording of so they have put in such a way it was quite uh, amusing but uh, you know he says now i'm not going because you had been meditating or you have been calling me for a long time so now i thought the time has come now i must go <laughs> so with bag and baggage he has come and he started staying <laughs> staying with the person this is quite uh, you know this is like a story but it it has got some meaning which conveys that we, we are all one and uh, from our uh, we start practicing and all there is so much of uh, hindrance will come on the way anything uh, so when chitradi was reading the first uh, thing that uh, aravinda says that meditation and concentration in the process of meditation and concentration there are so much of uh, so much of uh, uh, you know uh, the obstacles will come on the way so much of obstacles it will take us different way it is not required Uh, this this no you are trying to concentrate on one thing but the somebody has to go ahead and overcome all those and you know uh, to get the strength to uh, go and then only they are succeed it may not be possible in one life itself it may take hundreds of lives or millions of lives you do not know no has the formula is written but all the same once we have decided that yes i have to uh, do this i have to realize this so we should put all our energy But Bhagavad Gita also somebody says that you think and decide. Once you have decided something, then you should go in that path. It is not harming anybody by loving everybody or seeing God in everybody or every object. So it is good for those objects also and people also and for me also. So why not to do that? Since we have got the time and energy at our disposal, why not to spend on that? So this is the thought.
was coming to my mind. I thought I'll express. Thank you. Very beautiful. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, very beautiful. Thanks, Taru. Okay. You want to wind up now? Wind up. Run over. <laughs> okay. Thank you so thank much. You. Hi, thank, thank you. you. Beautiful, beautiful, Taru. The last thing you said, no. Yeah, it thank was you. very um, animated. He said yeah. and it reached home. Captain also. Yeah. It's sad, right? <laughs> like how we don't, we can't leave our cleverness, right? Yes, like, correct. Yeah. It's, just, it's just painful to see because see, obviously everybody is a mirror, right? Yeah. So, and I don't know, it can even like hurt people. So one doesn't want to say these things at all, you know, mostly. Yeah, but... It is the truth. It is the truth that you should at least, I mean, you should know about it. Yeah. You have right. to be vigilant. Yeah. Today my take home is vigilance. <laughs> Give yourself a wrap and go. <laughs> okay, Taru. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't want to take uh, yeah, more time. Yes.